Hey guys, it's Andrea from the blog Pine and Prospect Home and today I want to talk to you guys about some recent updates we have made in our kitchen and I especially want to focus on the DIY airstone accent wall that you see behind me. So about two years ago now, I had this amazing opportunity to work with airstone and I covered my entire brick fireplace using airstone. Now this has been one of the most popular posts on my blog. I think a lot of people are interested in airstone and basically airstone is just a very lightweight material that you are able to apply to your surface with some adhesive that they provide. It's very simple. In fact, my husband is actually the one who started on the fireplace and I was just so impatient when he went to work the next day that I finished the entire thing myself. I was able to do all the cuts. Um, it was basically like frosting a cupcake and so I had a lot of fun doing the fireplace and after we completed it I really wanted to use the leftover stone that we had somewhere else in our home. And finally I kind of settled on the idea of potentially adding stone to our kitchen. So our kitchen has come a long way since we moved into our home. The previous owners put in all the countertops, all the new cabinetry, all the new appliances. We were so blessed, so blessed with those main components. But over the years, my husband and I have sort of added just every year maybe one or two more things to make that kitchen more of our style and really that cottage look that I'm going for. I plan on sharing all of those changes probably in a future video just to kind of walk you through what we've done over the years to really create a cottage style kitchen. But today I really want to focus on this accent wall that you see behind me because I finally feel like it is completed. So like I said about two years ago I had finished the fireplace earlier in the year and I really had the desire to use that leftover stone somewhere. And so I had the idea of applying it to the back wall in our kitchen. And I didn't know if I would have enough. I just sort of started on it one afternoon while my youngest was taking his afternoon nap. So I did this all on my own. And once the stone was completed, I did decide to use a German schmear technique. And I have a tutorial for this on my blog as well, how I sort of covered the stone to make it look more old, to make it look like it had been there for many years. So I did this, the German schmear all over the stone. Then I just felt like once the stone wall was finished, it was beautiful, but I didn't like how it was sort of level with the window trim. The window trim in this window just didn't match the original windows throughout the home and it just didn't feel like it flowed with the rest of the home and so ever since I have finished that wall I have really wanted my husband to add trim around that window to make it match the other windows in our home but also to make it look as if the stone wall had already been there and then the window trim was applied on top of the stone. And so finally this past weekend, we went ahead and tackled that project and it was so simple. We basically followed the same tutorial that I explained on my blog on how to case an opening. I plan on sharing all the details about this window project hopefully very soon on my blog. But on a whim, when my husband finished all of the trim, I decided to stain the wood instead of paint it. I thought, you know, once it's painted, it'll be hard to change my mind and go back to stain, but why don't I just try adding some stain first and see if I like it, you know? And of course I can always paint it to match all the other white windows throughout the home if I don't like the stain. So I added some stain to the window trim that matched our dining room table and I ended up really loving it. In fact, I feel like it's sort of a statement in the kitchen now. I feel like it looks so rustic and beautiful against the stone. Now, I can't promise that it'll stay this way forever <laughs> because I'm always changing my mind. Maybe I'll switch and paint it white in the future, but for right now, I feel like the wood accent on that far wall against the stone is so beautiful and it really just pops and adds a lot of warmth and contrast with all of the white and black going on in the kitchen. 
Of course, now that this far window has new window trim, I am already thinking about changing the window above the sink to have similar trim. Another thing that we decided to do, which again, I plan on sharing how we did this, is we added some faux French window panes to the window as well. And it's hard to tell, unfortunately, in some of this video that I'm showing you, just because of the way that the sunlight is blaring through the window. But I think it just added so much character and it's such a beautiful, unique touch to this kitchen and it sort of ties into the French doors that we have in our living room that lead out to the sunroom. So I love the way that that looks now against the stone wall. Another thing that we did was the stone was level, of course, with the baseboard that had previously been there as well. So I just had my husband go and grab a 1x8 and we cut it to size and nail that to the existing baseboard so that again the baseboard looks as if it's sitting against the stone so i gave that a fresh coat of paint and once it was all finished of course yes i know it's february and we still have snow here in michigan but i had to grab some flowers and throw them in the basket i'm so ready for spring um, I also added some copper pans and I added some little cup hooks in the beam, the faux beams that we have on our ceiling, and hung some copper and I think that just looked so beautiful and it sort of ties into our copper faucet and the other copper accents we have going on in our kitchen. But I really love the way that this wall turned out. Another thing that we completed this past weekend that I mentioned in my dining tour video that I posted recently is that we cased the opening that leads into the kitchen. So, um, like I said, that originally when this home was built was just one single doorway. And the previous owner that lived here did a lot of great things, one of those being that he opened up the kitchen so that you know it's much more open, it flows nicely into the dining room. But that opening just didn't look original to the home, especially because in the 30s, that probably would have been sort of trimmed out. So we trimmed out the opening just like we did to our opening in the entryway. And again, I have the full tutorial for this all on my blog. I will link it in the description below. So I really love where our kitchen is heading. We have done so many things in this kitchen. And I mean, each year it seems like we do one more little thing just to make this kitchen feel more cottagey and warm and inviting. We have changed out the hardware, we've painted the walls, we've added subway tile, and we added faux beams to the ceiling, which again is one of my most popular posts on my blog and I will share the link for that if you're interested in doing something similar in your kitchen. But our kitchen has come a long way and I'm very, very thankful for this space. It's where I spend most of my time. Of course, there are some things that I would still like to tackle in this kitchen. Just silly things that I don't really need. It's just more of a want than a need. So these um, handles that you see here, I actually purchased right when we moved into the home. I got them on eBay for just a couple bucks each, actually. They have served us well. I think they are beautiful handles. But recently, I switched out all of the drawer poles for more of a cup style handle and I really love the way that those look. To me, they have more of that 1930s vibe and so unfortunately I don't feel like they really match these. They almost look a little heavy and masculine with the handles so I'm still thinking about it. I may end up switching these handles out as well and when I do I'll let you guys know what I end up choosing. Another thing that I would eventually love to switch out is our stainless steel sink. There's nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly fine. It has served us well for eight years but I think it would be so beautiful to get you know something that looks a little more vintage maybe a white high back sink i don't know i i like to dream of these things but it's definitely not a necessity we have a beautiful faucet right now that we purchased from signature hardware i love the copper finish it's a gorgeous faucet so it's serving us well these are just dreams that sometimes i like to think about and maybe one day they'll happen we'll see 
Of course, all of our appliances are stainless steel, which, you know, for most people, I'm sure they would laugh at this or think this was silly, but I think it would be neat to have vintage appliances or at least vintage inspired appliances. I know there are a few companies that make them, but they are expensive, so definitely not a need, just a want, but you know, I think it would be beautiful, for example, to replace our microwave with a DIY hood vent. I've been showing my husband pictures. <laughs> And then we could kind of hide the microwave back in the pantry area. Overall, I'm really happy with our kitchen and it has come a long way since we moved into the home. It felt very modern. The paint color was very dark. It was like a dark, rusty red color. And I think that we've really helped to just brighten up the space and make it feel more in tune with the home itself. The outside of our home is just this English cottage style architecture and so I just love bringing that into the home as well so that it all flows really nicely and this kitchen feels as if it's been here you know for many years. If you have any questions about my kitchen or if there's something I didn't mention that you're curious about, please leave a question in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, please be sure and hit that subscribe button.